Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics, and in this video, it's blatant Tory corruption in the spotlight again. Seems like only yesterday, doesn't it, since the last time? Actually, I think it was. But anyway, on this occasion, it's the old failure to declare interests, as reports emerge that former Environment Secretary Theresa Villiers, who decided policy, which would have a material impact on oil companies, of course, had £70,000 worth of shares in Shell, and didn't tell anyone. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So let's be clear about one thing. No ordinary member of the public wants government ministers making policy decisions on the basis of how much money it will make them personally. They want those decisions made on the basis of what's best for the people and the country. Doesn't matter what their politics are, that's how they want ministers to approach policy making. But corruption and politics have been bedfellows for thousands of years, of course. So in order to make sure that ministers make policy decisions in the way the public would want them to, you need systems in place to prevent those decisions being made for purely personal gain. And let's be honest, our systems are poor. Granted, they're not necessarily good in the vast majority of countries, but ours are poor. The main way we try to tackle this sort of corruption is via transparency. Ministers have to complete paperwork which discloses any interest, whether personal, financial or whatever, which could have a bearing on their decision making. I mean, MPs have to declare interest in general, but focusing on ministers here. The theory is that if a minister pursues a policy which will benefit themselves, you know, because they've declared their interest, the media can go, oh, look, you've got shares in this and you're making a policy decision which which looks like it could benefit that, which means it'll benefit you. They can report it to the public and the public can go, well, that's not right, and let their displeasure be known. You can see the flaw, though, can't you, straight away. Even when these declarations are filled in properly, the media rarely reports these conflicts of interest. When they arise, for Conservative ministers at any rate, they are just not reported. Yes, like the Guardian and the Mirror will report on it, as they're doing with this Villiers story, but the rest will observe a strategic silence. Oh look, a cat stuck up a tree, let's report on that instead. In addition, even when something is reported, most voters tend to be a little tribal and lacking in critical thinking inclinations. So it doesn't necessarily make that as much difference. Like they'll say something like, oh, you, they may have shares, yes, yes. But that's not why they're adopting the policy. It's a good policy, the Daily Mail said so. Frankly, I think that potential conflicts of interest should simply not exist, as far as is possible. Like, financial ones, there are things you could do. Like, tell ministers you can't have any shares, sell your shares, all of them, in everything. Not just the ones that are related to your ministry, don't, have any, don't be a shareholder in anything. Like, I guarantee there are enough MPs in Parliament to fill up ministerial positions who are happy with that arrangement. Now, if there are enough Tory MPs to do it, well, there's, there's no rule against appointing uh, MPs from different parties to government, right? There are enough MPs who are quite happy to not have shares to take up a ministerial position. Sell your shares or stay as a backbencher. Frankly, they can do enough damage from there anyway, as Owen Paterson showed. Now, that doesn't stop corruption. There's different types of corruption. Like, take Rishi Sunak, for example. A great many government budgets since he became Chancellor have mysteriously benefited his wife's commercial interests. We probably can't say that your partner has to sell their shares. And there are other ways for large corporations to corrupt ministers anyway. But as weak as the system is when people fill their declarations improperly, it, the weakness there is in the media rather than the declarations. But the declarations has weaknesses as well. Like one of them is, what if they don't fill them in? What if they just don't? Someone then has got to, by accident, discover that they've got these shares. You know, I'll come back to Rishi Sunak in a moment. But what happened here with Theresa Villiers, right? Former Tory Environment Secretary, she simply didn't declare her shares. Now, this was a conscious decision to deceive the public. She says not. I'll come on to her reason in a moment. I don't believe her. Now, I would say, first of all, it's not something you forget to do. You have to fill in the interest paperwork, even if you don't have any potential conflicts of interest. And the shares in question were so valuable, of course, she's checking on them. She says, oh, I was managing them. Yes, OK, you sometimes have other people manage them on your behalf, but you're going to check. You are going to check the reports on them. You want to know how your investments are doing, even if you don't deal in the day to day. So as far as I'm concerned, she deliberately hid her interests. Now, 
why would you keep shares secret unless you intended to make decisions which would benefit you financially? Also, how far did deception go? Did others know about it? Boris Johnson was the Prime Minister who appointed her. Did, did she withhold it from him or did he know and not care? Did she say to him, oh, Boris, I've got these shares in Shell. Do you think I should declare it? Oh, no, there's no need for that. I don't know. You know, if, if that is what happened, he's effectively colluded in the deception as well. You know, in the Guardian's report on this, she tries to explain the deception. I'll give you her reasoning. And it's the sort of thing that sounds plausible, but really isn't. She's, so there's a rule that says you have to declare shares of £70,000 or more. Her shares were worth that. But there was a time when they weren't worth that. So she's saying, oh, it flipped over to the £70,000. And I didn't realise, I'm terribly sorry, someone else is managing my investments, you see. And you go, no, because like I said, you may not be managing the investments, but you're reading the reports. I mean, people get like a mortgage. If you've got a mortgage, you get a mortgage report each year. You have a look at it. You might not care that, but you see what it's up to. She'll do the same with her share dividends. You know, the rules require you to declare shares above a certain value. That value is still very high. Now, what I would say is this is another failure of the system. Why above a certain value? Why not declare all shares? I mean, 70,000 as well, that's a hell of a high threshold. But think about it. Why does anyone have shares in anything at all? I can only think of two reasons. Yes, you could be given shares, but you could still sell them if you don't want them. There are two reasons I can think of for having shares. First, because you want to make money from the success of the company in which you have shares. Or second, the Elon Musk reason, because you want to have influence over that company. You know, you want to say at the shareholders meeting. So it doesn't actually matter what the value of your stake is. If you have shares, you have an interest in the company. If you are a minister, you can make decisions on policies which impact that company. You should not have shares. But if you do, you must absolutely declare them. I don't care what the value is. They must, and it, I don't care what they are either. You know, there shouldn't be a threshold in the rules. And it shouldn't be a case of, oh yeah, but the particular, I'll, I'll be in the Department for the Environment, Farming and Rural Affairs. So, you know, my shares in whatever don't really count. No, declare all of them. We'll be the judge of whether any of your policies are impacting that company. You declare all of them. Another failure is the lack of consequences. At worst, she will face a standards investigation. Apparently, there's a few other MPs who have fallen foul of this. She'll face a standards investigation. Maybe she'll be suspended from the House. Maybe she'll be recalled. Maybe she won't be an MP after that. Or maybe they will accept her reasoning. It's like, oh, well, they weren't below. They, they were below 70,000. You didn't have to declare them then. Oh, you just didn't realise? All right. It's plausible enough to give them the benefit of the doubt. But it doesn't really matter to her. She's not been in cabinet for years. Her political career is past its peak. Her party has been ushered out the door, albeit quite slowly. I cannot imagine she really cares what happens to her now. If she did abuse her position as Minister of the Environment, free from public scrutiny over her conflict of interest, she's gone away with it. Whatever happens to her, she's gotten away with it. I would like to see criminal offences from things like this. Let us see if they're a little bit less careless if they face prison. You can face prison for being a bit careless with your tax returns. Why not? Declarations of interest are far more, have far more potential to cost the country than an individual, even a wealthy individual's tax return. Let us, let us see just how easy it is to not be careless if they might face prison, is what I would say. But even when the rules are followed, the public can still be none the wiser about the conflict of interest. So coming back to Rishi Sunak, he is currently under investigation for not declaring a potential conflict of interest regarding his wife's business dealings and the recent budget which gave one of those businesses public money for his half assed childcare pilot scheme. Now, what is not disputed is that he did not publish that interest ahead of the decision being made and announced to the public. And just to be clear, he does have to declare his wife's interest as well. The ministerial code is very clear. You don't get away with it. Oh, it's my wife's nothing to do with me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the ministerial code says otherwise you declare hers as well. You know, and... But what is not denied is that it wasn't published. So there's no way members of the public would have known about that unless they could find out about some other way. So the decision was made, the budget was formed, it was announced to the public, 
And even at that point, the public, unless they had some other way of knowing about his wife's commercial interests, didn't, they did not know from him. They did not know from his declaration because he didn't publish it. He doesn't deny that. But he contends that he, he followed the rules because he had filled in the declaration. It was all done properly. It just wasn't published. And his argument it didn't have to be published. It just went off to an official. That's fine. I've declared it. I've declared it to the civil service. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. It might be true. Let's say it is true because it's already quite clear at this point that even the rules when followed properly are rubbish. What it means is it's fine for a minister, even the prime minister, to not publish a potential conflict of interest as long as they're filled in paperwork and sent it to some civil servant. But no, the system's not supposed to rely on civil servants leaking conflicts of interest. The point of declaring these interests is so that the public, the people you're beholden to, know about them and can decide if there are links between financial or social interests and policy and spending decisions being made. And even if Sunak is found to have breached the rules, it won't be considered serious. He won't be resigning. The money has been spent. The spending plans aren't going to be changed. His household will have profited and he will be free to do something similar in next year's budget as well. And like I say, even if he did publish the interest, if he made it publicly known and the rules stipulate, as I say, he has to declare his wife's interest as well. But even if he did it in the most transparent way possible, which he clearly has not, if the media don't point these money trails out, then the public aren't going to be even called upon to make judgments anyway. Whole thing stinks. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.